Tom on the floor of MBAA 2012. In and amongst all the interesting news stories that have come uh, come to fore uh, thus far, one of the things that we've been waiting to see is how the Kestrel is going to fill out on its way to certification. We now see the engine, we've seen a prop selection, a couple of other selections, but obviously an aircraft like this is meant to be used, used hard, used all over the world, used in a variety of environments, so a de-icing solution is a critical selection. Can you tell us what Cox & Company brings to the mix and especially what particular technology you're bringing to the icing equation? Cox has been involved in ice protection for 50 years and we've been in the low power ice protection systems business for about 16 years. We've been involved in a lot of airplanes, but we think Alan Klappmeyer and his experienced team is going to make this plane a great success in the market. Well, Alan, of course, led a team that got a piston single through FIKI certification, so and that's no small task in this day and age, especially as standards got tougher and tougher and tougher. So with the selections of EMEDS, obviously, he's got to think you're up uh, up to snuff on this. And as I understand, EMEDS, Electromechanical Expulsion De-Icing System, is an intriguing technology from the standpoint of one of the requirements on airframe systems and the simplicity with which the pilot operates it. That's right. It's a very user-friendly system. The system doesn't require the pilot to worry about the thickness of the ice before he turns it on. We think it's really a perfect fit for this aircraft because all of the components of the system are actually located below the leading edge. And this is really important for the efficiency of the plane because we can maintain a laminar flow. There are no protrusion steps or gaps. How will the pilot interface with the system? Well, actually, the system in some air applications is run by an automatic uh, with an ice detector, and it can be turned on that way. But for an airplane like this, which may not have an ice detector, pilot can turn it on as soon as he detects ice on the windshield, for instance. That's a common way that a pilot will know when to turn it on. He can turn it on then and just leave it on until he exits the icing condition what is required to operate a system like this? Well, very little power. For one thing, the system is going to draw less than 500 watts, and that's enough to clean the wing and tail. So it's a very efficient system, and the electrical system won't even really be affected by the operation. So the obvious question is, how do you do this? The way it's done is we actually have a system which uses these electromechanical actuators, which are positioned below the skin. These actuators expand very rapidly and they impart a small deflection but a very high g-force to the skin and when that happens it knocks the ice off. The substructure is very rigid, the skin is just slightly flexible, just enough so that it can move when we hit it with the actuator. Is there going to be any particular type of ice it's going to be more effective with or, or against? Well, harder ice is easier to knock off and wetter ice that you find in a glazed condition is tougher but there is no restriction on when you run the system and it will work under all conditions. It's certified and has been flying for the last uh, 12 years for flight into known icing on a number of uh, business jets. Now bringing a system like this through certification what kind of tasks are you going to be uh, placing on the aircraft? How are you going to make this system not only certifiable but prove to the FAA that you're up to the snuff necessary for the kind of operations the typical uh, single-engine turboprop is undertaking? That's a good question. Well, Cox's uh, long history of working with uh, the FAA and with airframers to pull this off. We have our own icing tunnel in New York where we will be doing a lot of experimental work. And when we do that, we bring in FAA representatives and designated engineering representatives, DERs, and so we start off right from the beginning building up a database that proves the system performance. And then we work throughout the engineering process with the OEM, with the planning and the execution of various tests to prove that the system will be certifiable. We look forward to having it on this airplane and we think that uh, we're just really pleased to be teamed uh, with Alan Klappmeyer and his, and, and his group on this aircraft. Aero TV is brought to you by Avidyne is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy to use avionics. And the new IFD 540 and 440 FMS GPS Navcoms set a new standard for ease of use and simplicity. As plug and play replacements for legacy 530 and 430 series navigators, the hybrid touch user interface of the IFD 540 and IFD 440 makes it much easier to access the information you want while reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. 
Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy, Abidine.